Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Jay Helms, and if you're new here, if this is your first time discovering the W2 Capitalists, we as the W2 Capitalists are here as a resource to help you and your family build wealth so that you and your spouse can spend more time with your family. Uh, we're here to, help, here to help you create a bigger nest egg for those golden years, as most people like to call it, and gravitate you toward uh, building generational wealth, right? That you can pass on to your kids, they can pass on to their kids, and so on and so forth. In this video, I dive deep with Mr. Adam Zock. Adam is a mastermind VP. He's one of the guys that helps me lead the mastermind calls, and he focuses on single family buy and holds. Uh, so we're gonna do, there's two segments really into this video. Number one is to ask me anything where we got questions for the W2, from the W2 Capitalist community. The other part is he did something really intriguing with uh, setting your rent, lease to own, lease to own options. Um, that has me intrigued and I actually want to pick his brain. So that's how we end up uh, finishing up their call. And I apologize if you can hear the kids screaming. It is supper time and they are extremely hungry. So let's Adam, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, man. It is good to be conversing with you. Yeah. So if you're, you're listening, you're watching and uh, watching me. You're listening watching uh this is not the normal way i introduce people to the podcast and adam's not a normal guest he is a special guest because everybody comes on the w capitalist is a special guest but he's a super special in that he is a uh he's been in the mastermind for a while he's stepping up into a leadership position inside the mastermind he's going to be leading the uh, he's one of our mastermind vps who's going to be leading the um single family buy and hold virtual sessions that are going to be happening throughout the, the coming months. And uh, I'm one of these guys, I told these guys, hey, I want to do an Ask Me Anything episode with you so that uh, listeners or viewers get to know you and understand you and your philosophy around it. Plus, you're a super smart guy, a lot smarter than I am. And we're going to get into the reasons why here in just a little bit. Um, and this is just kind of kind of be a, a little bit different format, right? And I hope to bring you a couple of these a month with the other Mastermind VPs. So, the way this works, uh, or the way this is inside the w, uh, W2 Capitalist community, which you can find at w2capitalist.com slash community, uh, as these things get scheduled, and I'll leave the guys, uh, I can leave it up to them to schedule them, I'll post a question, hey, or post, I'll make a post, hey, I'm recording and ask me anything with Adam. What questions do you have in the single family buy and hold space? So um, that's where we're going to start, and then I've got some particular questions uh, that I want to know about something you've been trying to explain to me for, well, you've explained it to me many, many times and I still can't get to the bottom of it. And quite, and like I said, and I'll say this again, I am tired of you showing up to the mastermind call saying, well, we got another deal done. Well, we've got another deal signed. And why I love that for you, my jealousy comes into play and like, I want that too. So obviously you've tapped into something that's extremely great and uh, it's very unique uh, from investing in single family. So we're going to dive into that in just a minute. First thing I want to ask you though, you, how old's your son now? He's one. He's one. Okay. So my youngest is, uh, oh man, 15 months, 16 months. So we're both going through those teething stages. Is yours cutting the canines yet? Yeah. So he, he was a little bit later, whereas our, okay. our older daughter seemed to have like a full set of teeth by the time she was 18 months and he's just kind of holding off and it's kind of nice where he just is just like bursting through all of them you know rapid succession <laughs> just like it's almost like hell week but it's it might as well just do them all uh, poor so guy yeah, but man he'll get over it and not have months of that ahead of him that's good yeah we're uh by the way did you know that humans have canine teeth so I don't know uh, when you said canine, I was kind of thinking like the, like the carnivore, like not the front teeth, not the back teeth, but like the canines. Yeah. Like, it has a little point that I, I mean, I also refer to them as the, the vampire teeth because they're the ones that have yeah. the points, right? They're there for, um, at least the scientist tells us that they're there to help, uh, chew off meat and stuff like that. Right. So they're tear off meat, not necessarily chew off meat, but tear off meat. And I mentioned that in the mastermind the other night and people started laughing at me and I'm like, what are y'all laughing at? And they're like, well, you said canines, like canine. I was like, yeah, we have canines. And they're like, 
no, we don't. So obviously I had to break out the Google and, and show them like, yeah. And this was coming from, from, um, people who had kids and people who didn't have kids. And I was like, how do you guys not know about this? You know? Hmm. So that's where we're at with our, uh, number three. Got to do canine things with those canine teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tear some meat. <laughs> um, anyway, so you're sleep deprived just a little bit or no? It's, it's not too bad. So, um, you know, our, our oldest, I feel like everybody goes through, like you have a great child then you know, they each have, <laughs> you know, different things. Our first sleep deprived, you know, still lingering effects of that. Luckily our son now much better, either we got wiser or something, but he is maybe 10,000 times better than, than our, than our first who's three. Isn't it amazing how kids, I mean, there's a certain age and it's usually right when they're born, you can tell this one's going to have a different personality than the other one. And for us, it's like, we have boy, girl, girl, boys, conservative girl in the middle is kamikaze. And number three is we're trying to figure out she's the sweetest thing ever. Um, so conservative kamikaze and then the sweetie pie, I guess, is what we're going to go with. Um, oh, that's a good. But yeah, it's amazing that they have their own different personalities. Anyway, let's, uh, I got a couple of questions here for you in the ask me anything section of the show, I guess, is what we're going to do here. And these come from members of the community, right? And um, uh, one is from Michael Denman. Michael is actually a member of the Mastermind as well. Uh, he actually runs our book club, uh, which is really cool. I'm so glad he took that off my hands. He is a much better person to do that than I am. But he asked the question is how to gauge, how do you gauge profit requirements versus cost and potential cost for single family rentals? Sure. I, I, I gave this one a, yeah, a little bit of thought because I think there's a notion of profit versus ROI. And I'll maybe spin mm. that a little bit differently from cash flow and ROI because some people can be making $2,000 a month cash flow at a 1% ROI where somebody else can come in and be like, yeah, I'm making 150% ROI. And they're, you know, rubbing $2 mm. bills together because they got a dollar <laughs> fifty. Yeah. And so, and so I think the question is, yeah, on a, on a profit standpoint relative to the capital that you're employing, how do you kind of balance that profit versus risk? And when I, it, it's changed a little bit for me. When I first started, my plan was just don't lose money. Just for the love of God, just make, make the <laughs> ROI zero or up would be fantastic. You know, yeah. besides the, the house hack that I did, like our first investment properties are not great. Like try to HGTV it and it was just, terrible. And to this day, I don't know that we'll make money on them. I'm still holding them because I like the buy and hold strategy, but basically just kind of lick the wounds. You get your lessons <laughs> learned. And then I've kind of graduated as I've matured, been around, you know, individuals like yourself, Jay, and other people and read books on it, that disproportionate reward to risk is something that I really subscribe to now. And so mm. if you're looking at just a good solid investment, I think like the running annual average is like a 12% cash on cash ROI. I know they say that in bigger pockets, Jay, you kind of preach on that on, you know, making your money, get at least 12% and kind of That's going where from I there. adopted it from was uh, BP. Yeah. And so Brandon Turner does a fantastic job where he's like, Hey, and he might've just set the standard, right? He could have said 8%. Have. He could have said 6% and people are just gone you think with he it. set the market standard. Like everybody's like, well, that's it. The market, and it very well could be. I mean, it's a huge community. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without them. But um, you think? do you think Brandon set the market on what a, a suitable cash on cash return at, at least for two of us. Like for the two of us on this call, I imagine if we're any resemblance of the bell curve that yeah. he did it where somebody's like, you know what? I could probably get 8 9% in the stocks long term, you know, bear in mind none of the amortization appreciation or tax benefits that you normally yeah. would with real estate but somebody's like well I'll, i just want better than that and if i can do that boy we're in a trifecta so let's let's do that yeah yeah absolutely absolutely um 
you know, so the reason why I brought up sleep deprivation earlier with the kids cutting teeth and stuff is because if I seem a little out of it, I'm a little tired. <laughs> I just realized as you're talking, I was like, why in the hell was I bringing that up? And I was like, oh yeah, it's because I'm tired. And I wanted to throw out a disclaimer and give you an example of why I'm so tired. And I, I worked pretty late last night. But other than that, usually at some point in time, all the kids are in the bed with us at this point in time and, you know, sleeping with multiple kids in the bed and they're punching you in the face and kicking you in places where like, I don't know how, when I'm laying face down that I still get kicked in the nuts by one of my <laughs> kids. I, I just don't know how that happens, but I got up this morning, super exhausted and tired. Uh, I probably got like five hours of sleep and it was self-inflicted right i stayed up but I, I didn't do my miracle morning i didn't go to bed at the time i know i was supposed to go to bed at and i got up and i got our youngest everybody else was downstairs except for me and the youngest picked her up getting ready to go downstairs and i was like wait a minute where's my wedding ring it was not in the place that i normally put it i know i took it off last night because i take it off every night before i go to bed i looked for this thing for two minutes and guess where it was in the bed it was on my finger <laughs> it was on my finger and i'm sitting here thinking all right this is gonna be a fun day <laughs> oh man I've got to schedule in a nap time uh, I, I, it didn't happen today i i am a sucker for an afternoon nap but today it didn't happen uh i will be going to bed early we've got a little bit of a trip tomorrow um well and that that, that brings so. up a really interesting point because a lot of people are i'm too busy to invest in real estate yeah. and then when for your point jay we're like oh well try and throw on young kids and real estate and the w2 and then it doesn't yeah. look it doesn't look like you don't have any time anymore and i know everybody's situation is a little bit different but that blend of no sleep throwing your brain fog not getting the <laughs> the you know probably the good food that you should be doing because you're tired so i reach for the cheetos which is my any, whatever's know. quick right you just yeah. grab it yeah and, and go yeah and and part of the self-inflicting is I'm going through this coaching program um, to create a coaching program and it is this boss of the wall. They're, they're testing me and it's, it's a really good, really good thing, but it's a lot of stuff I've got to do. And, um, but you're right for people who want to invest and have kids and have a full-time job, they think they don't have time. Right. And part of what I'm coming up with is to address that. You know, everybody's got time. It's you it's just, hard though. Boy, is it hard. Yeah. Yeah. But you've done it. I've done it. There are almost 50 people in the mastermind that, uh, that are doing it. Some of them are already, you know, they've graduated, so to speak, from the W2 world and, and now doing a uh, real estate investing full time. So, um, but yeah, it, there is a way to do it. It's just a whole mindset thing of, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much time do you spend? watching Netflix. How much time do you spend watching football, right? We're in the middle of football season. And, um, you know, I, I was listening to, um, Patrick, but David guy, who, the book we're going through this, this month in the book club. And he was talking about, you know, on Sunday, on any typical Sunday, there are 13 hours of football. He goes, and I, I used to be guilty of this. I would, when I played fantasy football, I mean, I played fantasy football so much that I put it on my job resume at one point in time. Now the job was for the Atlanta Falcons, which they didn't call. Right. But I put it on my resume one time because I thought it may impress them. It did not. And, uh, but I used to be the guy I'd wake up. I would love it when they were playing in Europe because that means they started at eight o'clock and that just fed in right into the, my entire day. I was sitting on the couch watching football, doing absolutely nothing but being lazy and when, when Patrick Bet David said that it was uh, 13 hours, I was like, damn, how much lost productivity did I lose from those years of just sitting there and watching TV, right? Now I don't watch football at all uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't, it's, everybody has the time. They just have it prioritized differently, right? I would agree. Yeah, I think it's, I was in the same boat. Like I, th I think I would consider myself an, an addict and I don't want to do it disservice <laughs> to those that would actually be going through, you know, maybe right. some things with drugs I know or alcohol. Mean, yeah. But like 
when I get onto something, I get just literally obsessed with it. So fantasy sports, whether it was, you know, Texas Hold'em when the craze was going on, <laughs> whether it's like a video game, like I, like I get so like addicted to it that once you kind of switched the addiction from those things that weren't really a multiplier or an adder yeah. to life to now like, oh, now I'm addicted to audiobooks. Now I'm addicted yeah. to yeah, yeah. morning yeah. smoothies or waking up, you know, super early. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just what a wonderful difference, just changing what you're, what you're addicted to can be. Yeah. I, uh, I was looking back. I, I have a hat somewhere. I, I don't know where it is. The kids come in and make my office their own. And that's why the camera only shows like halfway up, but, um, I have a world series of poker hat where I went to Vegas and played in the world series. That was not the main event. It was a thousand dollar buy-in and, um, I placed like 300 and something place. It was in the top 300 of an event, not in the money or anything like that. Uh, but as we're going there, I went there with my, my boss at the time and his son and, and one of his buddies, we're walking in the main hall and this huge, have you ever been out there? Have you ever been to Vegas or been, been to Vegas? Yeah. Been, have you ever, did you ever play in a huge poker tournament or anything like that? Nope. Nope. So, um, we're walking in this hall. I mean, there's thousands of people in this, right. Or I think there was 1200 people in the event. So we're walking in this hall and, and I, one of the guys I'm with says something, I turn around and then not looking where I'm going, I'm talking to them and I turn back around and I run into Chris moneymaker and I like to the point, I almost knocked him over and he's, he's not a, he's a short guy, but he's not a small guy. You know what I mean? So I was like, I was uh, like shocked uh shell shocked or whatever you call it when you see a celebrity that anyway lost my we ended up uh i ended up having a really good run after the tournament was over and uh playing inside games and stuff like that that just basically paid for my trip and my admission fee so basically i went to vegas for free love it but it's amazing how i know that i mean that was my addiction right i mean you're absolutely right about what you can and can't do and, and how you're, uh, you're placing that stuff with audiobooks and being around, just having conversations like this, what did it do for you? Anyway, we're yeah. getting way off topic. <laughs> we try to circle circles back around. So, uh, another question from the community, Bo, ah, Bo, I'm going to butcher your last name. Gobel, G O E B E L Gobel. Bo Gobel. All right. Bo's got two questions. Uh, where is the best place to market for lease to own mm. lease to own properties? And so when you, and I was thinking about that and I didn't get a chance to get clarification when he says best place to market, which I imagine isn't like a region like the Southeast or the South. I think he's looking more for like Zillow Craigslist. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah. The way and I read so, that is, Hey, I've got a market. I want to, I mean, I've got a property. I want to lease to own it. Where do I advertise for that? Right. Yeah. So I would say in order of success that we've had, it was Zillow number one, okay. Facebook number two, Craigslist number three, and then having your own personal network of people mm. that, you know, bankers, real estate agents, folks that are specifically looking for that is kind of like an indirect marketing thing that essentially we've, you know, modeled as our entire business, um, you know, not really knowing that, but yeah, if you have an existing home, you know, that is that you're doing lease options for those would be the three that I'm yeah. doing the most. So Zillow number one, which Zillow gets a lot of crap, right? They catch, yeah. and I am guilty of it too, because of, um, the property we're in now, we try to get refinancing at one point in time. And I called, several banks, we ended up going just to the bank that we, that has our original mortgage to do a cash out refinance. But I called several banks and one of the banks that I called on the phone, they said, well, your Z Zillow says your house is worth X. And I was like, are you fucking quoting me Zillow? Right? Excuse me. I'm trying not to do that podcast. Are you freaking quoting me Zillow right now? I think is what I told the rep, you know? And I was like, I'm trying not to cuss on the podcast anymore. There was a lady in the community says that told me 
that her son starting to listen to the podcast and recognizes my voice and all that stuff. I was like, yeah, I, that's good to know. <laughs> but Zillow catches a lot of, of flank, flack, but you're saying that for least owns, it's actually a good place to advertise. Yeah. So, and Zillow's recently came out with like how many properties you can put on it. And so it's different per state. So gotcha. like Minnesota, you can only have one listing for free. And then after that, it's $9 and 99 cents in our area to have multiple listings. And so you used to be able to list everything on there, you know, and, and you get a lot of people. So I'm yeah. kind of curious in the neck, in the near future, what that's going to do if people stop listing on Zillow or if it now mm -hmm. becomes like a premium site where you know only serious candidates and properties yeah. are available because if it's no longer available, they're going to pull that thing down as fast as they can. So it's, yeah, it's kind of an interesting strategy from Zillow, but that was historically, you know, what we have done, but yeah. And then after that Facebook marketplace, there always seems to be people looking for something there. Very cool. Very cool. What are your, uh, so follow up question from Bo is what are, what are your biggest keys to success? And, and you know, give maybe the top two or three. And I know there's a lot, you put a lot of hard work into this set your rent uh, concept, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, but what are your biggest keys to success you would share with someone doing their first lease to own? Right. And, and if, so not buying a lease to own, but selling on a lease to own is what I'm assuming because there's, that there's all, I'm, yeah. Cause it, yeah. Cause there's programs out there where just like owner <laughs> financing, you can do a sandwich lease option where you buy it. You, you, you know, you see a hundred thousand dollar, hundred thousand dollar property. You say, Hey, what if I just gave you $500 a month with the option mm -hmm. to buy it at a hundred thousand dollars and then they'll go around and wholesale that and be like, Oh, Mr. Tenant buyer. How about I rent it to you for $750 a month at $110,000 and they basically just sandwich it. So assuming that you're wow. on, on the back end of it. Yeah. So that's like a, how to control it without owning it and not having your name on any bank. So there's, you know, a little bit of that. That's a, that's a whole nother side. That's a whole nother episode, man. But yeah, but <laughs> that's, that's more along the whole wholesaling lines, but the biggest yeah. things on looking for, least to own people are people that actually need it. And, mm. and I'll qualify that, you know, maybe as number one, where if you're trying to protect yourself, money talks. So how much of an option fee you charge is probably your biggest risk mitigation. If you let somebody into a lease to own with zero money down, the odds of them exercising that option or going through with it, you know, are about as slim as a renter wanting to buy your house you know, mm. afterwards, which still does happen, but there's no statistics for it. However, if yeah. you charge them 10 grand as an option fee to lock in their purchase price and the exclusive right to buy that home, if it appreciates, depreciates, whatever, I'm not going to walk away for 10 grand. Like I'm going to exercise my <laughs> option and sell it or do something to try yeah. to recoup that, you know, so that being number one, we, we started off doing our first lease option, completely the worst way you could do it. Learn about <laughs> lease options. And was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever, right? Instead of <laughs> rentals, we can do lease options. We can put all the work on the tenant buyers. We'll just act like a bank, $100,000 house. We put like 10 grand into it, thought it was worth about 150. So got somebody to, you know, and then when I say got someone, so we're not helping someone, we got someone, you know, in gotcha. marks where we were really not trying to help them. And they were professional, like con artists. So we didn't really do our screening the right way mm. but we got somebody we saw the dollar figures only had one month's you know deposit on there and just kind of thought oh this will make everything go away ended up having to evict them and it, it was it was the entry to lease options on how to do everything wrong but you went through that and you still came back and said no i want more right and now you're up to what 24 25 for your the set to rent mm -hmm. that we're going to talk about here in a minute because that's one i want to know <laughs> <laughs> yep that's right. So I feel like it was just like problem, pivot, problem, pivot, problem, pivot. Gotcha. And then that's, that's kind of how we ran with it. Very cool. So what you're saying there is make sure there's somebody that you can help and solve their problem versus somebody who may try to, uh, that you can get right. Or you can get them to lease the house, at least own. Yep. I, uh, so one, one of our very first dances 
uh, and trying to get involved in real estate. Once we were in Pensacola, we found a condo and convinced the sellers uh, to do this, to at least own it. And we were going to use it for a vacation rental. I mean, it's a condo. It overlooks the water, looks overlooks the marina, whatnot. We told them we were very upfront. Look, we'll pay you. I think it was twelve hundred bucks a month, and then anything over that we got to keep. Right. <clears throat> well, three months into the deal, it was working great. Uh, things were happening. The place was staying booked. We had it was we were using it for short term rental client. Um, Tenants were happy, people visiting, were getting great reviews. And then the owners get a letter from the HOA saying, hey, we want to point out that in this section of the HOA, our association does not allow for short-term rentals. And, you know, it was funny. I, I got so upset. I was like, what? how does this not, you know, how did this not come up? We were very forthcoming in what we're going to use this for. And they even gave us a copy of the HOA documents. It's not in there. It's not in there. Sure enough, after I cooled off and went back and read it, it is clearly written in black and white and it's right oh, there. No. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. So what are our options? You know, and we went through options, talked to a lawyer. Uh, we wanted to get it changed, which in order to get something changed in an HOA in Florida, you have to have, uh, for the most part, you have to have two thirds vote of the ownership to change it, which is almost an unsurmountable task. So we ended up giving it back to the owners. Um, you know, our the very nice couple, um, they ended up eventually selling it, whatnot, but didn't keep us on the hook. You know, they were so nice. They were like, yeah. look, we didn't know this, or we didn't know, we've had friends come down and stay this, you know, when we weren't there and, and all this, because it's kind of a ridiculous rule for that HOA, blah, blah, blah. But the point of y'all telling this story is if there's, a, if it's in an HOA, make sure that you dive into those HOA documents because HOAs can, um, I mean, there's some that the previous neighborhood we lived in, your blinds and your curtains or your window coverings, whatever faced the road had to be a certain color. Like they were, they were very strict. There were, you couldn't have any signs outside your yard. You couldn't have any flags on your prop, like uh, hanging off your property. Um, it was very, it's the bureaucracy I'll get to them. that I do not want, yeah. to, uh, want to uh, even wrestle I'll, with. I'll give it to them. The standard of the neighborhood. I mean, it was very good. It's very clean, very well kept. There was no, it was very uniform. There was no creativity. It was just, you know, just cookie cutter. Um, <laughs> but anyway, if you're, if you're listening to this and you try to do a lease option on a property that is involved with the HOA, not only do you get a copy of the HOA documents, but you actually read them, you know, you actually go through them and, and make sure you understand you mean, every you, word. You, in you, it. Don't, you don't just read them. Like I do. I just read for what I want to read. I'm like, Oh yeah, <laughs> well, that's uh, what I wanted to see. I wanted to see paragraph this and this paragraph. And then I don't need to see the rest. I saw what I needed to see. <laughs> apparently that's what we did. That's, uh, apparently well, that's what we did. So, um, I don't know. We, we were very lucky to be able to get to that. I don't tell that story a lot. Um, I don't know why. I mean, it's, I guess cause it's such a short one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but be careful about that. All right. So another question from Bo, do you use wraparound mortgages and what are the, what are some of the pros and cons of wrapping around? And just so for my sake and for everybody's sake, who doesn't know what a wraparound mortgage is, what, how do you define that? What, what is a wraparound mortgage? So I would not be the best person to talk with this. And so okay. I'll, I'll probably defer. So, you know, from generally having contracts, you know, offered or done different things, but I stay away from wraparound mortgages because we just do it a little bit differently. So okay. they can probably get a little bit better on, on that one advice elsewhere. If so I can basically deflect. you, you, you've, you don't have any experience. Not on the wraparound, wraparound mortgage for gotcha. the single families. So I love that you're um, applying a rule of the mastermind <laughs> to that question, <laughs> yeah. which, which what I'm talking about uh, is for the folks who are listening and watching and 
is when we're in the mastermind, we're on a mastermind call and somebody asks a question similar to that nature is that you can't answer the question if you don't have experience based on what they're asking about. You cannot say, well, I read this about X or I've heard this about X on a podcast. That's not what the mastermind's about. So you're applying that rule, which I appreciate very much. Yeah, sorry, I can't be more help. <laughs> All right, Bo, we're going to have to Google uh, wraparound mortgages and come back to you on that one. Yeah, there's a whole uh, podcast on wraparound mortgages. So I'm sure like specific, there's probably multiple, right? Where it's just mm -hmm. how to use it and whatnot. Um, all right. So I grabbing this sheet of paper. Yes, I did print this off. <laughs> I saw that. I was so, like, what, what are you doing? I've never seen somebody printed it off before. I didn't print it off. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am, uh, I want, I want to improve things here on the podcast and I've been watching a couple of guys and taking notes from them and the guys who have tons of subscribers, they, they all do this one thing. They have notes in front of them printed off and it's very easy for them to go through. So that's what I'm doing. Plus I am a, I am a paper and pencil kind of guy or paper and pen. I've got three different paper notebooks right here, all for something separate. You would never know that I had a degree in computer science. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, I don't know. There's something about it. Um, for our trip tomorrow, we're going to look at a property. I've printed off everything and it's in this little binder that I'm taking with me even though it's electronically on my phone already. Um, but anyway, so I want to talk about something that I feel like you are, and you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, that you're the godfather of this whole thing that you have created, right? That you kind of figured this out. And we're talking about this whole set your rent concept. So before we kind of dive into this and walk, walk me through this, um, uh, investment opportunity we're going to call it a mini franchise we're going to use air quotes um what is set your rent what does that mean for us it is slowly trying to privatize the banking industry so we're so we're serving two ends of the spectrum investors and people that want to get a low interest loan the problem is in the middle, it gets really messy because investors that own like apartment buildings are all, you know, usually all investors and you have all renters. And then you get large banks backed by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or community credit banks. You know, they have money getting, you know, it federally backed at a lower interest rate that if you have a 680 credit score, you meet all the income, then you get that. But then yeah. there's the people trying to move between the chasms that really we feel like if you just privatize the whole thing, that might be a better kind of overall. So that that's kind of like the the large big picture um, area of kind of how I conceptualize it is that any investor can buy any home for any person that wants to leverage money and have a mortgage on it. And why can't the investor and that tenant buyer come to an agreement on down payment percentages and that's essentially what we're doing. So there is no bank involved in your process. We will try to use banks if we can, because we will be leveraging the lowest interest rate that we can. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I, so, yeah, I can, I can take a little bit of another stab at it if you want, but. Matt, you know, and this is, this is, this is me. I'm trying to understand this because again, you, you seem to be killing it with this whole, concept uh that you started i mean you're winning awards i mean you're you're in um uh north dakota right south mm -hmm. dakota why don't i know this <laughs> it's it, where's, it's where's because my wedding they, ring we're in the dakotas <laughs> the north, dakotas the, the, i started to go there i was like no adam's gonna pick it up is that I it is know. it is north dakota though north yeah. dakota all right so i was right with the, the first yep. of it all right um but you're, you're winning awards in North Dakota. You're on TV. You're, you're being exposed for, um, you've, you know, just creating this whole business around it. So I think there's something there. I just, I can't wrap my tiny little brain around it. So, um, walk me through. All right. So say I am a buyer, right? I want to buy this home. I found this home. Um, how do I, why would I come to you versus going to a bank? Sure. So the number one thing that we do is try to turn people away from us, which 
you know, essentially, Jay, now that you've, you know, had the ability to do, le- well, uh, I, I was going to say, why would you do that? But you may yeah, answer so, that here in just a minute. Sure. So like, you know, Jay, now that you maybe don't have the quote unquote W2 job, when you get your 2020 taxes, you might look different on paper. And so let's say you were <laughs> looking to go buy another property, you might go to your local bank credit union and they'd be like, well, let's just wait till your 2021 taxes come in before we pre-approve you, right? Whereas That's a real world scenario that happens, by the way. That has yeah. already happened for me. And so <laughs> when you're like, well, I want, I want to get into a home, what other options do I have? And people just shake their head, right? Like if I, if I can't yeah. do this, what am I going to do? Get all cash? Am I going to get hard money for a mortgage? I'm not going to do that. Which is expensive, right? Right. So, so what we're kind of doing is like, okay, well, there, there are individuals who have a W-2 that the bank sees as very safe. So, you know, for example, your fellow coworkers that are still potentially, you know, working away, the bank sees them as very bankable because they got a 750 credit score, they got the W-2 income. So like, well, I'll loan, I'll loan to that person, but I won't loan to Jay. Whereas I would look at the situation like, I don't need to basically look other than just verify that Jay, if I bought you a home and charged you 7% interest, that I would have any concern. And there's people Mm -hmm. that are sitting with a bunch of money that don't want to put it into a 0.2% savings market because they're at 60 (laughs) years old and their money market's doing nothing, but they don't want to go into the stocks and a five-year CD does about nothing. So you get all those people, you're like, hey, what if, we'll call it, we'll call it Randy. Randy, what if I could say you can get 7% on your money while helping Jay get into a home? And he would say, Mm -hmm. 7%, I would love that. And so essentially- we would make that transaction happen where we're just connecting the money with someone that's not able to do it and they could do it all cash. Or if they're a W-2 employee, they'll go get a commercial loan themselves, you know, get 80% of the financing and then, you know, pony up 20% or like we do get private money for the other 20%. So we don't have to come in with cash on anything. And I feel like that's just a good pairing where we're just connecting A to B. Gotcha. So they get the, so the uh, W2 employee would get a commercial loan because it's a uh, rental property. Uh, mm-hmm. that's it. So we're talking about single families, but tying a commercial loan to that single family. Uh, okay. And you could, you, you could do it in your own personal name. There's nothing wrong with it. We, yeah, that's just the way that we would do it. Yeah. There's, there's some risk tolerance questions there and asset protection things that um, if you, if anybody's curious to do that or wants to explore to do that, just, make sure you're aware and talk to your attorney and and with this whole package that you've put together, the mini franchise opportunity, again, do you all offer that guidance? Do you have a legal team that somebody can talk to? Like if I'm interested in in being part of this, how does it, how does it work? Right. Cause you're starting to, I am starting the light bulb is turning on for me. I wouldn't say it's bright, but now, and you've probably said those exact same words to me over and over and over again. Uh, but now I'm starting to understand it and realize the power behind it because it's, it's pretty incredible. But before you answer that question, let me ask you this. So privatizing the banking industry, right? I mean, the, the banks, bank is a four letter word for a reason. I hate dealing with them. Uh, underwriters, I feel like those are the people who are just in this room that are not allowed to come out. They have no soul and they they're slid food underneath the door to just do more and more. Right. Um, I mean, literally I, I have yelled at my loan officer before and telling her that, Hey, either you have everything you need because this now the fourth time you've come to me to ask for additional information or we're walking away from this deal. And uh, my wife, and this was a personal residence. My wife was really upset that I did that. Uh, Cause it basically said, we're going to walk away from this house. Magically the underwriter found everything that he needed you know, <laughs> or she needed he or she, whatever the case is. Um, but do you think, do you think you can make a big enough blip on the privatizing on the bank's radar to make them change, make them shift in the way they do business. I don't think I would be changing the way that they do business because if you're government backed, you're probably going to get the lowest interest rates you're ever going to get. I just envision in the lifetime of myself, 
that you go and you look, hey, I want a mortgage. Not only do I have government backed banking options that are my lowest interest rate, you got VAs, you got FHAs, but I think there should be just an open market platform that just says, hey, here's my down payment, here's my information, it's somewhat secured in the middle. Who is willing to buy me a house? I'll give you 3%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, whatever the number that you name. And why can't those two people, almost like a March Madness playoff bracket, <laughs> where you got all yeah. these people on one side inputting yeah. what they want, you get everybody on the right side being like, you know what, if I could just get 4% for two years and then Jay can refinance with a different bank, you know what, that sounds pretty good to me. And if you look really good to someone, maybe you can get the lowest interest rate, but maybe you don't look so good. So you need a higher down payment or you have a higher interest rate, but at least you're building equity. You're not just throwing away your money on rent. Nothing against those that want to rent, but for those that want home ownership, paying yeah. almost any kind of interest is better <clears throat> than just straight up renting. Yeah. I don't know that there's anybody who wants to rent is actually listening to the podcast. I think we're safe there. Sure. I, I don't know. It may, maybe they're, you know, doing what I wanted to do. Uh, and my wife said, uh, no way we're going to have our own space because we have our own kids. Is I wanted to rent somewhere so that we can take whatever um, equity we had or value that we had and go buy more rental properties. But she was like, no, we're, we're getting our own place. And uh, I am thankful that she brings that reason to my world. So, <laughs> um, but you said something there about it's a two year turnaround sometimes. I know that the terms vary, but what's the average? Like if I am the, the money guy, if I'm coming in, I'm going to provide you with some money, you being Randy who wants to buy a house. Um, what are the typical terms? What do they typically look like uh, from that perspective? Sure. So for as much as we can control, we're trying to set both parties up for success. What we're right. seeing, if you search rent to own, Number one, you'll just get like for sale by owner, which doesn't help. Right. But then you'll also get those <laughs> that list their property on Zillow or Craigslist or Facebook. Um, they're like, yep, you know, it's a contract for deed or a lease option. You got one year to get your credit or get a bank. If not, you lose all your money. And so many people are like, yep, I can fix my credit score in 12 months. And they, <laughs> and they seem so intentions. And so that bothers the he double yeah. hockey sticks if i'm if i'm yeah <laughs> no you up. can say it that's fine you know that yeah. really bothers me because then we get people coming to us be like you know i got in this thing i thought i was going to do it but you know i couldn't quite do it because it always takes twice as long just like a construction project it takes longer so we've set yeah. ours up that will if it's a contract for deed which is a more of a sale we won't go anything less than five years fixed rate amortized over 20 years or 25 years if it's okay. a lease option, we'll make them sign at least a three, if not a five-year option agreement that gives them enough time because the last thing that I'm going to do is kick someone out of the house unless yeah. they're not making payments because <clears throat> there's no reason that you should just be able to extend the time. And so what we're trying to do is give both parties like, hey, you got five years, figure it out. If you can't figure it out in five years, you know something's probably off, but within five years, you should have built up enough equity difference that you can just, you know, sell the home and be out of it anyways, if you didn't want to refinance with a bank loan. Yeah. Because when you, when you enter into that type of agreement, you set the sales price then, right? Hey, I'm going to buy this property from you at, let's say 200,000. Right. And then, so you've been paying, you've been paying, um, the, the money guy can't come to you later and say, well, I actually, this, pro this property is now worth 250. The price is now 250. Like the price is at 200, right? That's right. So okay. you, I mean, you can put almost anything you want in an option <clears throat> agreement, right? But typically it's, here's a fixed rate. Maybe they add like one or 2% appreciation onto it. Okay. Where you can say, Hey, anything above that is yours, but we're going to just generally, we just want to see one or 2% for five years gotcha. um, that you could add on so that you're kind of sharing that to the same point, you know, what's stopping the person from just selling it, right? Because unless you file your option agreement at the county, there's really no way to kind of cloud the title. Whereas gotcha. if you file a contract for deed at the county, they're going to see that. And so 
you know, you can work out different escrow agreements to basically, you know, protect both parties in the situation. Gotcha. Yeah. And you, you need, I love you. You're getting in the weeds on this a little bit. Um, cause it helps me understand how legal it is and how it's not just something you created and putting together and you've convinced a bunch of people to do the wrong thing. I mean, it's actually like legal transactions that are happening and are filed with the, the county. Um, and I don't think you would be the kind of person to do that anyway, but, uh, it's, I don't, it's just mind blowing. And I think I've said this before, cause you, you asked me when we very first started talking about this, about what you were thinking about doing. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I, it's a little bold strategy for me. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Cotton. We'll go see where this goes. And now you're on uh, number 24 and I'm like, all right, there's some, there's some, you've got some ground <laughs> underneath you. Let's, let's see, let's have a real conversation about this. So <clears throat> if, if I'm the money guy and let's just say Randy stops paying, right. And not only did I provide the 20% down in this scenario, I provided 20% down. I got a loan from a bank, right? Randy is my, um, is he considered a tenant? Uh, we call them tenant buyers. It helps. Cover. Tenant buyers. Okay. So Randy is my tenant buyer. Randy stops paying, right? He's been very unresponsive. Um, what are my, do I try to evict him or it, because I don't know, is that the process that you go through? You try to go to victim because yeah. in the end, the bank's looking at me, the money guy and saying, Hey, you got to pay regardless if Randy does or not. Right. You got it. So okay. if I am selling a home, I try to sell on lease options because lease options work like an eviction. And most okay. states evictions are easier than what I call an agreement for deed or a contract for deed or a land contract, yeah. you know, depending on what state you are. That is more often seen as potentially closer to a foreclosure. Okay. So if you okay. did a contract for deed and you're like, oh, I got to foreclose on you in North Dakota, it's like, oh, well, guess what? You got to wait six months for them to catch up. And then they're out, whereas an eviction is like three weeks. Yeah. So if I'm buying, I'd like to buy an agreement for deed because it takes that much longer to get me out. If I'm selling, I want to sell on lease options because on a lease option, you can still depreciate the asset, whereas yep. a contract for deed, you cannot. Gotcha. Okay. Just from a tax piece. So, all right. It's interesting. <laughs> It is interesting. So how, so you're the guy who's just out there marketing to uh, people who have money and people who want to buy a home, but can't get approved through traditional means. And basically you're making the connection, you're making the deal happen. Yep. I've heard you say, and you've posted several things in, in the mastermind and in the community uh, that you're in the closing, you're at the closing table, but why are you at the closing table? Yeah, it's, that's a good question. I now, now, now that you answer it, it's probably just to take a video, let them see me face to face. Cause we haven't almost like a bank. We haven't been in any of the properties that we've bought, which is mm. very weird because now we're not investing in properties. We're investing in people. Yeah. Which is a, a you know, a so different you, you don't do home inspections or uh, anything so, like that. So the tenant buyer pays for gotcha. the home inspection. We just get to see a copy and there hasn't been one where they're like, yeah, I want to move forward with this. We're like, Hey, there's structural issues. We're not going to do this. Like usually they're smart enough to be like, well, I want them to fix the structural issues. I want them to fix this. And then it's almost just like a, you know, another layer of negotiations. And then if they do that, okay, great. Then we proceed forward. If they don't, they walk away just like you were a normal home shopping with a mortgage. Gotcha. Okay. That's freaking brilliant, man. Um, all right. So, you mentioned something earlier, different counties have different statutes. States have different statutes, right? And different laws. Uh, and if you get into this kind of concept, you need, if you're listening and watching, you need to consult your attorneys to figure out what um, fits for your county and for your state. But with that being said, you had, Adam, you have launched, uh, and we're using many franchises in air quotes, because we don't know if this is an actual franchise or what? Why, why are we using air quotes? Tell me. <laughs> well, I, I think it's because you scared me. I think it's like, I think I, I was, cause that's what I was calling. It. I was like, okay, we have this idea. Somebody's like, Hey, I really like your idea. Can I do that in my area? 
And I'm like, oh, yeah. well, we weren't going to be in your area anyways. They're like, well, so how would that work? And we're like, well, what if we just give you the blueprint, coach you, show you everything that we do, and then we kind of just share in the profits, but they're doing their own mm. thing. I was like, boy, that sure sounds like a franchise, but however <laughs> it looks on paper, yeah. should not look like a franchise because then we got to do a lot more like FDD disclosures yeah. and all like the PPMs yeah. that you would do for a syndication, like si similar things. So it's just like, we're consultants is probably the, the more accurate term, but mini franchise just makes way more sense. Yeah, no, it, it it's a, a marketing term, right? So don't get, mm -hmm. if you're listening to this and, or, or watching, don't get hung up on, you're going to have to go through this whole process of FDD and discovery day and all this other stuff that happens with franchises. Uh, you're not going to have to do that uh, whole process and, and, and whatnot. But I, I am curious to, to this. So you're in North Dakota, where all do you have these uh, mini franchises uh, located currently? Wisconsin, and then the Florida guy took Florida and Ohio. But I'll admit that like this is that, like this is kind of like the cutting edge piece of it, right? Where we're just like, oh, we got properties in North Dakota, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Illinois, one in North Carolina coming up. So we like we didn't. It's just all referrals so far. They're just like, hey, gotcha. I gotta. And then so when somebody's like, hey, if I just took this mile radius, would that work? And you know, hey, we're gonna give you something and promise you in these returns. And it's, it's better to have a percent of something than hundred percent of nothing is yeah. the, kind of the famous quote. So we just kind of yep. said, yep. And eventually, yeah, we probably have to tighten those things up. If we go through <laughs> it, it'll be way more formal, but with more formal comes more expensive, which I don't like. I'm more so yeah. just a, let's try this out. And you know, if we're no good, then that means they're going to be no good, which means that we have no business trying to offer this out formally. So this is why the mini franchise, if we can get, two, three, four people to be like, Hey, I started this in my area. I did the exact same thing they did in the Midwest and it works here. Mm. Then I'm, then I'm that much closer to privatizing the banking industry gotcha. or at least proving it as legit. Cause right now it's like, well, they can do it in the area, but what about my area? So that's what we're mm. kind of trying to prove. Gotcha. So if I wanted to sign up for this, right. You mentioned there's profit sharing. Is there anything out of pocket? Like I had to do, I had to pay for to kind of sign up for your program and it, you mentioned the guy in Florida took all of Florida. Is that like all of Florida or is that like? Yeah. So right now it is like, <laughs> it, it's like not an exclusive, like, Hey, he, he <clears throat> owns this and nobody okay. else can go into it. Where's he he's, located by the way? See, he's not in Pensacola, is he? <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is not. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, realizing we're like, oh yeah, that doesn't mean anything, right? North Dakota, we got what, 500,000 people, me and my brothers and sisters. And they're like, oh, yeah. Florida and Ohio, that's like a 10th of the country. And I was like, yeah. didn't, didn't, quite, didn't quite do the math on that one. But for, for now, like kudos for him for, for kind of reaching yeah. out. But yeah, it was like, hey, you're going to give us, you know, basically kind of like a franchise fee. And then the goal is we're going to give you all this stuff. And then we're going to, you know, do some sort of share so that we only get serious people that want to yeah. actually own this. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have those, uh, filtrations in place. Otherwise everybody listening and watching and finding you are going to be like, Oh yeah, I want to do that. And then when you ask for money, they're like, Hey, I don't. That's so it's a good, it's a good filtration. What kind of price point are we talking about to get, to get started? So when, you know, number one, I would say you can just do this yourself. You don't need you know, you don't need us. Um, I, don't, I have a lot of projects going on. Personally, <laughs> I have a lot of projects going on right now. I don't, anyway, I know that's not so, how you're, yes, what you're so, talking about. Yeah, so, so my favorite thing would be for everyone listening to try it out to see if it works in their area is list their existing home as a rent to own, lease option, contract for deed, whatever terminology. Did this twice, moved twice, trying to convince my wife to move out of this house. She does not want to do that. <laughs> it is, it is, that is my super hack of how to get into this because then you list it at a price and a down payment that you are willing to move. If somebody's going to give me $3,000 mm. a month and $40,000 as a down payment, I will move tomorrow, right? And so you <laughs> put that price right there, right? And if nobody bites, what, what did you, you know, you took 30 minutes to put it on Zillow and yeah. you got nothing. Okay, great. If somebody says, yes, that ROI is phenomenal. And so yeah. maybe test it out, see if there is a demand. Then if there's a demand for your house, there's a demand in general. 
And so then I would say, number one, just try to do it yourself. You don't need us. But then number two, if you, if you're like, Hey, I kind of want to know the legal stuff and what, you know, all the pros and cons and what you've done. We kind of offer two different things where one will just coach you, you know, and that's like in the, you know, four or five figures, but, it, and then there's the, Hey, let's do this together, you know, which is in the five figures. And then there's somebody yeah. who's like, Hey, this market is right for it. Can you just do this all for me in my area? <laughs> and I just, you know, then, then that, you know, gets even beyond that where somebody's like, Hey, open this up in, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, and just run it everything. And I just want some sort of split, but I'm going to give you, you know, 70 grand of working capital to do the marketing, get this up. And I just want, you know, some return in the future for however many of these that you do. And, realizing there could be like three different tiers of we'll kind of teach you show you or do it for you type model gotcha very cool i like it man i i am uh i guess we need to have a uh off-air conversation about <laughs> is florida locked down or or what the case is yeah <clears throat> totally um, not not my intention of you like you said no. when we're on this ask, ask me anything you're like oh you know we got some questions i was kind of preparing like why <laughs> single families are way better than the multi-families so i can rub it in everyone else's faces <laughs> and then they can come back and like counter punch and be like you're just playing yeah. with small pawns and i'm like i'm turning my pawns into queens and then use all kinds of chess <laughs> analogies to try to win over the people to get out of multi-family into single yeah. family because i felt like a lone duck when I came in the, in the mastermind. <laughs> so I'm just going to beat them with results. You know, there, we have a good mix now and, um, you know, the, uh, multifamily call is limited. Uh, it's the most limited call that we have as far as availability. I mean, it filled up in the first couple of, couple of days of announcing this whole expansion thing or whatnot. But, uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to say sound like a liar because I am going to look at an opportunity tomorrow. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a lot of single family folks coming in uh, into the mastermind too. And, you know, you said something earlier before we were recording about how um, when you found me, you felt like I was a, ma a multifamily guy and I am, I mean, we have far more units in multifamily than we do in single family, but um I am, I am curious on, it just tells me something about my messaging. I've got to change it because we, there are so many different ways to make money in real estate. Um, you know, this year I did my first private money loan. Um, you know, what you've created with this set your rent concept is something totally new. You know, one of a big, uh, buzzword for the last couple of years has been the Burr strategy, which that's always been around, but people called it, you know, now started calling it Burr. Uh, it, there's just a lot of different ways you can make real money in real estate mm -hmm. and not just like coins. I'm talking about actual dollars, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's good stuff. Good stuff. So quite a diverse group in the mastermind. Uh, and, it, sure. and it's fun how much you learn. Like, yeah, it, it's fun to geek out over single family because it's the greatest according to our call, but you know, <laughs> what, what you yeah. can learn from others when they're like, Hey, I'm doing this multifamily <clears throat> inspection or I'm lending money you know, like you said, like the multi-nature, the cross-pollination where you yeah. kind of, you know, drill into what you're good at, but then get exposed to other strategies so that you're like, oh, I'm going to take that little hammer and I'm going to put it in my tool belt <laughs> and I'm going to take that little pliers and yeah. but I'm still going to do my single family thing, but I'm just yeah. going to you know, kind of be aware of the other things going on. Yep. Yep. That's good. And I hear you throwing out those jabs to uh, push the other guys to, to come on and talk about why they're niche is the best investing yeah. vehicle for for real estate so uh, i hear it i hear it and i think you when we first did the um the group recording where we introduced all of y'all you uh you threw down a gauntlet there you're like hey let's come back in in uh, a couple months to talk about why our niche is the best Right. So we got to get that lined up. We got to get, yeah. get I'm just sure. a competitive person. So I want to do it. I, I fully expect to lose, <laughs> but I just want to compete. Yeah. And we know this because of your Hawaii hat that you had on uh, <laughs> from that episode. So uh, something about bar Olympics, I think was the phrase that you used. That's <laughs> good stuff. Uh, all right, Adam, we are, we've been chatting for over an hour. Uh, it's amazing how quickly time goes uh, when we talk about this stuff. 
I want to, I want to personally thank you for explaining this to me one more time. Um, I, I would say the, uh, the ball got moved down the field tremendously <laughs> versus where it was before. Uh, I have a little bit better idea about this. This PDF that I have, I grabbed it off of your uh, social media feed uh, from Facebook. Is there a place if people are interested in this whole mini franchise uh, opportunities, is there a place where they can go find that or, or just connect with you? I mean, I know you have set your rent, mm -hmm. but is that for, that's mainly for uh, tenant buyers, right? Yeah. So you kind of caught us like we, we have not uh, maybe, maybe done the best job at actually marketing this. Like we've, yeah. We've tried Google and Facebook ads to like tenant buyers and we've never tried to target towards investors. But to, to your point, if they want to find anything about it, we'll make sure that it's on, you know, setyourrent.com. There's an investors tab and okay. I'll make sure that it's on there because there's a little investors. I was, I was checking it out here before we go on. There is a little um, point that you can click on there and get that PDF now. Okay. Very cool. Sorry. I didn't mean to catch you there. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. Like it's, you kind of, you know, we've, we've always been told like, Hey, if you share your message more, like, you know, you, you probably get a lot more interest, but luckily what we're trying to do is just take care of 10 on one side, 10 on the other side, like investors and tenant buyers. Yeah. And so far we've gotten, you know, besides one person that we didn't buy a home for that thinks that we're the devil everyone else has given us a five-star <laughs> review, which, yeah. you know, we always felt if we could build it on a strong foundation where we have 10 investors and 10 happy homeowners that, okay, now we're legit. It used to just be one and one. Now it's 10 and 10. I hope I don't have to change the number, but now we're like, okay, <laughs> these, these people and the video testimonials that they give us on the YouTube are, are well worth it. Nice. That's a 90, that's over a 95% approval rating. That's pretty good, man. That's, uh, that's you know nice. what? So our, that's our motto is I will never tell someone no. I mm. make them tell me no. And by that, I mean, if somebody looks terrible on paper, okay, you need 30% down. I'll make them say no. <laughs> and it turns out some people will say yes and surprise you. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, um, yeah, I like it. I like it. You know, you, you said uh, you don't have the PDF up just yet. I just thought about this when I put all of y'all's information cards up on the w2capitalist.com slash mastermind where you're leaving mm. these calls. I don't think I have any of y'all's contact information on there. I need to go back and check that out. Uh, so if people are interested in what you're doing or joining your specific mastermind call, that information is there. Um, I need to get your information. That that that, it, that so. should that should be their way of entry. Is they got to join the mastermind so that they can, uh, so that they can come <laughs> in on the calls and then and then pick. But I want to make it make it too hard for people if they wanna if they wanna reach out, reach out to Jay. He'll he'll connect us. If yeah, he we'll we'll definitely get it, get you connected with Adam if you're interested. So if you if you are interested in the set your rent uh, concept, the quote unquote mini franchise or uh, joining the mastermind, reach out to me. I'm very active on Facebook. You can just go to Facebook and look up. Um, uh, I don't even know why I'm giving this out. I never, I've never done this before. I never referenced, go connect with me on Facebook. Matter of fact, I'm almost at the friend limit. So don't do that. Go just send me an email, j at w2capitalist.com, j a y at w2capitalist.com. Adam, thank you very much. I look forward to doing this again with you in the very near future. Hopefully, Holy crap. It is about to be November. Jeez. I'll oh, see. Thank, I'll, thank we'll you do for this next this, year. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That, that keeps, that keeps it wide open. We'll, yeah. we'll get the new year's resolutions. That's it. No, this, That's this it. has been great, Jay. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. This is a, this is a pleasure. Absolutely. Um, oh, it just scared me cause I couldn't see the record button. I thought we've been talking this whole time and it hit record. <laughs> That has happened. That has happened. Uh, that's why it scared me. Anyway, Adam, have a great night. My kids are starting to yell. It's going to get loud in here in just a minute because it is getting supper time and mm -hmm. got to go feed the beast. So thanks, buddy. Right, I appreciate it. And I will hopefully see you Tuesday night, tomorrow night. You got it. All right, man. No, right, wait. Man. Wednesday. Wednesday at it'll lunch. Be, it'll be you, Wednesday. You shifted to Wednesday at lunch. Yeah. Trying to keep everybody on their toes. Tuesday to Wednesday and then running a Monday. Keep it. 
Keep everyone <laughs> guessing. <laughs> All right, buddy. Have a great night. We'll see you. You too, man. Later. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video with Mr. Adam Zock. Here's what I recommend for you as next steps. Number one, if you're interested in being around like-minded individuals who are going to share their knowledge and push you to accomplish more than you ever thought imaginable in the real estate investing world, connect with us at w2capitalist.com slash mastermind, right? The other resource I want to give you is w2capitalist.com slash events. This is a calendar where you're going to be able to see all the events coming up, including the webinars and the virtual happy hours that we're hosting here during uh, COVID and the, the schedule for the mastermind sessions, right? And that's w2capitalist.com slash events. And I don't know why I mentioned virtual happy hour during COVID. Matter of fact, that's just going to happen. That's going to continue going on as long as uh, we continue hosting mastermind sessions. So the second step for uh, for you from here is to let me know what resonated with you. I, I want to hear from you. If you don't want to drop a comment uh, below, completely understandable, just send me an email. I'm at j at w2capitalist.com. At any rate, if you got anything out of this, uh, any anything in today's video resonated with you, Give me a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. Helps with the algorithm. Helps with all this stuff that uh, allows us to reach more people. So uh, send me an email. Uh, let me back up. Three things, right? Number one. Let me back up. Two things. Number one. Let me back up. Two things. Number one. If you want to be around like-minded people, come join us in the mastermind w2capitalist.com slash mastermind. The second thing is if you, uh, if anything resonated with you here today, leave me a comment below. Let me know. Uh, you can also, so let me back up for a second. So two things we'll wrap up. Number one, let me back up here. <laughs> let me back up here for just a second. Two things really. Let me back up here for just a second. Two things. Number one, if you're interested in joining the mastermind, if you want to be around like-minded people who are going to push you to achieve unimaginable things in your real estate investing uh, adventures, come join us, right? W2capitalist.com forward slash mastermind. The second thing, number two, um, I want to know. I want to know if something that Adam and I talked about resonated with you. And if so, drop me a comment below. If not, if you don't want to drop a comment, completely understandable, just send me an email, j at w2capitalist.com. I love getting emails, whether it resonated in a good way or resonated in a bad way. I don't care. I want to hear from you. Uh, and speaking of that, if you anything did resonate with you and you liked anything that you heard or saw today, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. It helps me understand where you are, what you want to see. Also helps with agro, agro, algorithm. What if I can get help saying that word? Uh, you guys make it a great day. Earn, invest, repeat.